Good evening in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 435, 435 in the Catholic Book of Worship. presence with us. I do want to extend a special uh, a welcome, first of all, to any guests to our community, and also to the catechumens and candidates, uh, who in a few short days will be received into the church at the Easter Vigil, or will receive the Sacrament of Confirmation to complete their sacraments. It's very, very good to celebrate this extremely important and powerful time of the church year. Let us begin. We open our hearts to our Lord as always, knowing that this particular time of the year is a time when we realize how much we need the Lord, and we ask his forgiveness and healing. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ Receive our prayer, you were seated at the right hand. 
let us pray. Sorry, you got it. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We now hear from the Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are, take, are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without a blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then, the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. done for me. 
the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing of this of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my heart. sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord my vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people our blessing copies of communion with the Lord A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bought does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and returned to the table, Jesus said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. It's one thing to say, it is good to gather. It's a common phrase uh, we use a lot here when we gather at the cathedral. But why is it good? Well, it's particularly good this night and in the days to come. Because we celebrate, well, the pivotal focus of our faith. Think about the things that you fear or you're very concerned about that prevent you from living well. You know, uh, when I was a young man, I keep saying not that long ago, the, the memory of my parents of the Second World Wars was pretty quite vivid, even though it concluded when they were children. But both of them lived in different parts of Western Canada as children, and felt the effects of those wars on just the whole way of life, not only in Canada, but in the world. And everyone was very fixed on the battle to overcome the oppression of evil. Uh, that was a feature of, you know, uh, Nazi uh, warfare and the uh, Axis powers. And it was very clear that the alliance had to deal with those enemies, because otherwise the whole world was at risk. Well, that is an obvious case of an external evil threat. What we've learned in our faith over a long time is the issue of external evil threats have always been with us, but we cannot underestimate the internal evil threats. 
The book of Exodus, our first reading, is taken in a time when the most powerful nation on earth was subjugating the people of God. And not only kind of lording it over, but were oppressing them in the life of very cruel slavery. And believe, believe us, life was cheap in those days, cheaper than ever. The way of cruel slavery meant that the slave really had no rights as we know them at all. And they merely and literally lived from day to day. The lifespan was very limited. And if people suffered and could not produce or work in any way, uh, they were discarded. And so the external enemy oppressor was very clear. And after a long time of the people crying out, Lord, deliver us from these, this oppressor. The most powerful king in the world is giving us and relating us to cruel slavery, Pharaoh in Egypt, God heard the prayer and he sent his beloved Moses to deliver them. Now we know Moses had a tough journey for two key reasons. <laughs> One reason, he was dealing with the most powerful man in the world. And uh, the man of most powerful man in the world was not going to let his people go. His people. They were my slaves. And I have a right to do with them as I wish I am the most powerful one in the world. And there are no ethical standards for me. But the other thing that Moses found he dealt with a lot, and it became the bigger issue in the long term, uh, was the sin and doubt and uh, incapacitating fear and therefore eventually the unbelief of Israel when they faced Moses' leadership to stand up against this oppressive evil power, it meant that they had to trust in God and trust in him to move forward to an unknown future, an unknown future of freedom. And it featured walking in a desolate new place in order to transition from that place of although familiarity of slavery, to the new place, the new way. And boy, did Moses have a fight after a while. Uh, his life was even threatened by the very people he came to save. Uh, they threatened to stone him and to kill him. And if it wasn't for God's protection and advocacy of Moses, <laughs> because Moses was very much advocating for the people, um, Moses wouldn't have lasted. It's one of the reasons why Pope Francis, uh, several years ago, said Moses is the greatest leader the world has ever known for what he came up against and what he was called to do. So tonight we celebrate the Passover. So the Passover. So God's people who were subject to so much oppression were passed over by God's angel who was going to deal with the oppressors. And unbelievably, it was Pharaoh who indicated uh, the evil. He brought down the evil that was, uh, therefore, took place. The firstborn of every uh, animal and every human being uh, was taken because Pharaoh decreed it. But Israel was protected. They were passed over as the evil was dealt with. And it was after that that Pharaoh let them go free. But what happened? <laughs> Again, as the people left, they're still dealing with the problem of evil, the oppressor. It stays with them. In other words, leaving the external oppressor, Pharaoh, was only the beginning of the journey to the unknown future of freedom. And they failed in many, many ways. Well, we fast forward to the time of Jesus. Get this. This time, the Passover in Jesus renders Jesus both the God who saves and the God who suffers. He is the one who becomes sin, even though he's without it, for God's people. In the sense that he is the one who is dealt with so that the obstacle 
that kept coming up for God's people over and over again would be finally dealt with. Because as many of you know, for years and decades and centuries, despite prophets and kings and many best efforts, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. The Son of God, the God-man, he does it. And so what we celebrate tonight, and then of course tomorrow, when we honor Jesus utterly humiliated on the wood of the cross, uh, is the focus of these days, let alone the amazing miracle of Easter Sunday. From slavery to freedom, easy to say, wonderful to dream, but boy, what a journey. It's also a day when we celebrate the priesthood, Holy Thursday. And we had our Chrism Mass two days ago, as many of you know, because it's easier timing for all the priests who, who live across the diocese. Some of them travel three and a half hours. So it's a, it's a, a more convenient time to do it Tuesday. But um, in Rome, they do the Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday morning. But whenever we celebrate the Chrism Mass, we're celebrating the birthday of the priesthood, the ministerial priesthood. And it's a priesthood that's celebrated because of the institution of the Holy Eucharist and the institution of, in Christ, what Christ comes to do to help support and save his people. Now remember, his people are not just passive people like those oppressed in Egypt. You are called to share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Those of you who know your Old Testament history, the people called out in the time of Moses for a king. (laughs) You know what God said through Moses? I don't want to give you a king. You have the ability to act like a king. If you live my commandments and you do my will, I call you to a noble way. But no, they they wanted a king because they looked at other nations and they had a king. And the king seemed to do things and make them powerful and and give them stuff and uh, all that. So finally, finally the Lord said, okay, I'll give you a king. But it must be a king after my own heart. So the first was Saul. And Saul had some problems, especially with with jealousy and an inferiority complex, I think. Then came David. King David was pretty good. He loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. And he went along pretty well. He fell once significantly. He committed two major mortal sins and then realized it and was called to to reconciliation. His son Solomon started off well. He asked for wisdom, but he did so well that the very blessing of, of wealth and political stability actually became his challenge and a bit of his curse, and so on. So it took the king of kings, crucified on the cross, to really show us the model of kingship and of priesthood and of the way of the prophet. On the birthday of the priesthood, I and Father, Father Gerard and, and Father Joe and, and all our priests, we are called to be ministerial priests who are priest, prophet, and king by our priesthood. Of course, to celebrate the sacraments for God's people. They're not ours. <laughs> they're meant to be given to God's people. Uh, and they're not just gifts. They're the very signs instituted by Christ that bring the presence of God for his people so that you may go forth and act like Jesus. The prophecy is the teaching and preaching ministry of the church. And the church takes very seriously the call to speak and preach and teach the faith. But it's not just me who's called to do this. Um, You receive teaching and preaching, so to speak, so that you may preach by word and life to the places God calls you. And of course, king. Now, king is uh, (laughs) some of my brother bishops. You know, they, 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 they get exhausted by what we call the third munera, priest, prophet, three, king. The call to administrative service. Because some days, wow, spend a lot of time at administration and governance. But the purpose of administration and governance is to support 
all the work and life and mission of the church. You need it. It's given to us by Christ and the church. However, it's oriented as a ministry of service, as a ministry of strength and support to help all the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ happen. And so I have, and our priests have a special role in that. You do too. You are called to bring to bear your gifts, your resources, um, how you serve and organize your life to bless your vocation. Many of you, it's a vocation of family. And your secondary work and vocations are also occasions where you bring to bear the gifts, the uh, uh, service, uh, to speak forth the mission of Christ in the world. I mean, we articulate this, I think, very well in Catholic healthcare, Catholic education, whether it's elementary, high school, or higher education, in other charitable services. But it affects everything, <laughs> absolutely everything. So this night and tomorrow and Sunday are a big deal because we celebrate a couple things here in summary. Number one, God does hear our cry to deliver us from all that oppresses us. Secondly, what oppresses us is more than meets the eye. It's not just the external obvious oppressor. It's the bentness in me that needs to be straightened throughout my life. One beatitude teaches this, blessed are the meek. You know, people don't understand that one very well. The meaning of blessed are the meek, coming from the Greek word praus, which has the meaning of taming of animals, means that my ability, my gifts are under discipline and control to be brought to bear on the life that Jesus calls me to. If I am not meek, if I'm not tamed, if I'm not disciplined, I am reckless and out of control, or I just pull away and do my own thing. I am not a disciple of Jesus Christ. So let this, these days be an occasion where <laughs> we can live the Beatitudes because of Jesus Christ. He does, as I've said before, boldly goes where amazingly no one could go before. They wanted to but couldn't. And many prophets and kings did their best, but they weren't the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. And now we see the extent to which God goes. He becomes the sacrificial lamb. We are passed over. He is the one who becomes sin for us so that all obstacles clearly will be dealt with. However, <laughs> it's not visible at first on the cross. Even the devil said, hooray, I've won. But on Easter Sunday, even the devil realized Oh, I did not see this coming. The absolute humility of the God-man makes possible us to be saved. And if we fall, dealing with the same kind of sin over and over again, as was the history of Israel fleeing Egypt, let us remember the cross. Let us remember the example of Jesus Christ. He was the most powerful, innocent one in the history of the world, and yet he became the victim. We are about to do something as a ritual on Holy Thursday that represents Jesus' great love, humility, and service. He washes his disciples' feet. And why does he do this? <laughs> I, I think you know. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to invite those that are, have their feet washed to now come forward as the ushers place the chairs.
In the glory and praise, number 362. Number 362 in the glory and praise. Sisters, as Jesus Christ washes the disciples' feet, 
because they call him Master and Lord, and so he is. So we recall what he did to remind us that we are called to wash one another's feet. We now bring before God our prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father, our Shepherd Bishop Mark, Father Gerald, Father Joe Nilo, and all who guide us in faith, that they may be holy and effective in their mission to draw all people to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in positions of power and influence, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all of us, that we may reflect in our lives the Eucharistic love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be anointed with the oil of catechumens and sacred chrism throughout the year, that they would be strengthened and sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, including those who will receive the anointing of the sick this year, that they may experience the healing power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for the dead, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may bring them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, source of all blessings, hear all our prayers spoken and known by you in the depths of our hearts. We make all of these prayers on this holy night. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the gifts. In the Catholic Book of Worship, number 610, number 610 in the Catholic Book of Worship.
Holy Thursday is the day of the institution of the Eucharist as well. We celebrate today that the Savior is also the victim, and the Savior in the victim is the source and summit. He is our food. An absolutely amazing, generous God gives himself to be our sustenance so that we may be what he sees us and calls us to be, people who are made in his image and likeness, people who are set free from all oppression. And so on this holy night, we celebrate the institution of the Holy Eucharist. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of, ever, of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Christ your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion to you are known. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Be pleased through God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his pre this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble, yeah. in humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high. In the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with Saint John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, <clears throat> thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of that peace. Peace of Christ. Thanks a lot. Peace of the Lord be with you, Father. God bless you. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. In the glory and praise number 360. In the glory and praise number 360. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. The body of Christ. The blessing of the Lord. Yeah.
Let us conclude our prayer. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now enter into a time of adoration of the Lord, of prayer. So we'll have a procession through the church. We'll have a tabernacle of repose here where Jesus will be until midnight tonight. The doors of the church will be open. If you need to go home and come back, you're welcome to. The church will be open till midnight tonight. After that, we repose in the garden in the chapel. So we have Jesus there. You notice the tabernacle is empty as you come into church today. As we enter into these three days is the one mystery of his death and resurrection. The chapel will also be open for prayer Friday from 9 to 9 and on Saturday as well from 9 until the vigil. We'll gather for Good Friday tomorrow at 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Stations of the Cross outside at 7.15 and our Easter vigil will be at 9 o'clock Saturday evening. Sunday Masses are as regular. Please kneel. Okay. Okay, the cross, the cross. Candles, candles, cross. And we'll come to the front, Bishop. We'll venerate first. Yeah. We'll incense here. Yeah. Just wait for the liturgical. All the servers. All the servers. Number 68 in the Catholic Book of Worship, 68.
Tout à l'heure.